everyone, Buddy here from the Denman Homestead, and welcome to the Denman Homestead Garage with my favorite little uh, garage setup table. And today we have something pretty exciting that came in. We are going to be upgrading our security system around the homestead. We have a security system right now, like a video surveillance system, but it is old and outdated. So it is time to upgrade to something with a higher resolution. Um, we wanted something with some motion tracking and uh, that can you know, track and detect objects um, walking around and send us alerts and all that kind of cool stuff. So uh, we decided to do an upgrade and we are going to be using the Onwote 8 channel 4K system for this upgrade. So I've installed lots of security systems in the past, lots of cameras, things like that. Um, I've talked about this a little bit on the channel, but my professional life away from the homestead is in the IT field. So uh, I've done, I've done it all. Um, I pretty much ran everything for this house. We didn't have the home builders do any of that. I, I did it all myself, save a little bit of money, ran all the networking, um, cameras, all that kind of stuff right now. So I do unfortunately have to get up in the attic to do the, the cable runs for this system, which I will not be doing um, right now because it's 104 degrees or something here in Texas. So um, I'm, I don't want to get up there, but I do want to show you how this system works. Maybe set up uh, a couple of cameras and take you through the whole process. So let's start by opening the box. All right, in the box, we have instructions, we have cables, oh okay, so they actually send, looks like four, so this, this system will hold eight cameras, um, and you can even get larger ones that will hold like 16. We got the four camera system because that's all we need right now, but we can get more cameras to upgrade this to eight if we need. So we've got network cables and these are 60 feet, 60 foot long. So uh, this will probably work for a couple of the runs I have to do, but some of the longer runs, I think some of the longer network runs, I'll have to just uh, make my own cable. Okay, so we have cables. Now we have the cameras. And we'll open one of these up here in a second. Four cameras. Um, a little box of, I don't know what this is. Let's take a look. Um, okay, so this is the power adapter for the camera server, which is in there. And oh, they even sent us a tiny little mouse. Tiny little mouse to run the uh, camera server. And then an extra network cable. I'm guessing this is for the internet for the server. And we have the camera server. Okay. So, that's everything in the box. All right, so this is pretty compact, little camera server. It's even got the holes on the sides so that you can put the little uh, little elbows on there to mount this if you have like a little networking station or something in your house. On the back, we have eight camera ports. We have a port that goes to your home uh, router. And then we have two USB ports, so that's going to be keyboard and mouse, I'm guessing. And then we have HDMI and VGA, so we're going to hook these up with the HDMI so we can get a little clearer picture out of them. 
We have the power adapter, and then we also have an audio out because these cameras do record audio. So that's kind of cool. So that's the camera server. Let's take a look at a camera. Mounting hardware. Okay, this is nice. So they sent us the weatherproofing, the weather jacket, so that if you have the cable exposed to the elements, you can put this little jacket on the network cable and keep water and moisture and all that stuff out. So that's nice that they give you that with each camera. And then we have the camera itself. So, you can see here we've got, this does night vision as well. So you've got the microphone, the camera lens itself, and then two lights above that. And then you have one cable that you can plug in to power the camera if you're going to power it with a local power source. We are actually going to power it through the network cable, which is, uh, we're going to be using PoE which is power over ethernet, which means all I have to do is run the network cable from point A to point B, and that will power this camera. And that is where you plug the network cable in to there. Okay, so this base will turn. And we gotta see how we can get the mounting. Let's see how we can get the, oh, okay. So the bottom, the bottom just spins on its own, and you can take the mounting bracket out. So that's awesome. Some, sometimes these camera systems come where you've got little wings, and you have to put the entire camera on there and try and screw into the ceiling or the wall or wherever you're screwing, like, at an angle past the camera, which can be kind of frustrating. It's really nice when they come with these removable plates, because then you can just take this plate, screw it directly to where you want it, and then you just twist on and screw the camera. So I love that they have removable mounting brackets. That's awesome. Uh, take a quick peek here at the manual. And this is about the setup of the actual system. So let's plug it in and see what it looks like. So I've got my monitor. This is just a regular computer monitor and the camera server right here at the bottom. Plug in the power to the camera server and then plug in the HDMI to the monitor. All right, oh, and my little mouse. Don't forget to plug the mouse into the USB ports on the back so we can control this bad boy. All right. So, uh, once language, English selected, I am going to have to get a keyboard because I have to create a login and all that cool stuff. So let me go grab a keyboard. So I mentioned that the back, you know, when I showed you, it has two USB ports. So one for the keyboard, one for the mouse both in. Now let's go get this set up. Well, I guess before I got the keyboard, I should have actually clicked on the box to type because it's got a little virtual keyboard built in. So I do not even need a keyboard. So cool. One less thing. So that means the mouse that it gives you is really all you need to get this set up. So we will log in. And it gives you the default username and password in the uh, book, but we will change it to something more secure. So after you set your password, you will it will give you an option to do a draw pattern, kind of like on your phone, how you can do the swiping and all the things to unlock it. Um, so that makes it easier when you're trying to get into the system and if you only have a mouse. So you have your text password that you can type in, but then you also have the draw pattern to make it a little bit quicker to get into the system. Now it wants us to set our date and time. 
So let's do that. Next. DHCP for network standing settings, we'll just hit next. Now it has an app. It gives the QR code to download the app. Now this is going to be for monitoring your cameras while you are away, which is awesome. And that was one of the things that we were looking for in a camera system. So it is the Guard Viewer app. And I will get this downloaded on my phone. Now I will be able to monitor this system, um, look at all the cameras from my phone, wherever I'm at, as long as this puppy at home is connected to the internet, which it will be. So um, we will hit OK. All right. Now we have what you would kind of think of as a standard home security screen where each of these little boxes will be a camera once we plug one up. So let's go ahead and get a camera set up so we can check it out. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I am going to use this camera right here that we already took a look at. And this really long, no, actually, it gave us a shorter, that's uh, fine, we'll use the long one. Um, one end is just going to go into any of your open network ports on the back of the camera server here. So we'll just pick number one. Start at the beginning. The other end is going to go into the network connector on the camera. Like so. So after a second, you will see the camera, once it's plugged in, you'll see it light up and do kind of like a systems test where it'll turn the power on and the lights and things for a second. And then you will actually see it pop up as one of the cameras on your server. And that is pretty darn simple. I mean, it just pops straight up as soon as it powers on into the system. So now what we can do is let's go get a different view. Since I have this really long cable, let's just get a different view to check something out. Okay, so we have the camera set up outside of the garage. It's just kind of sitting on the back of the golf cart right now so we can test it. But you can see the picture is crystal clear. So one thing I want to point out that I noticed, um, just kind of looking at the view, I'll open up another camera just so you can see. The bottom of the lens, the bottom of your picture are the little lights. The lights down here at the bottom of the camera, that is the bottom of the picture. So just keep that in mind when you're getting these mounted up. All right, um, Alora, you want to go walk in front of the camera for me? Alora is going to be our test. And she is walking back over in the camera. Okay, so you see that red box? So that is the AI of the red box. Move around, Alora. So it is detecting her walking and that's what we can set up alerts that will go to our phone. Um, it will say, basically, it's like an, an intruder detection. It'll just let us know that someone in the camera view is walking around. So walk around some more. Let me see if I can get this a little bit closer so you can, there you go. You see that red box? That's that tracking box. And that's what sends the alerts. Thank you, Laura. So, I mean, I am super impressed at just how easy this system is to get up and running. 
obviously with when you're doing camera systems like this the usually the more difficult part is just getting all the cables ran to the place that you want to put the camera um, but as far they can get super complicated in the server side itself just the fact that this is really just plug and play and everything once you plug the camera in you boot it up and it's there it's ready so you can right click anywhere on here and you can go to the menu and in the menu you can go to the alarm feature so the alarm feature basically yeah you can stand over here again thank you the alarm feature will basically let you draw out areas that you do not want to have go off. So the reason this is super cool is that if you mount this somewhere and you have something like a flag that is constantly blowing in the wind or a street that cars are constantly driving down as part of this view, you can actually leave these red blocks on here. If you can see this, let's see. So I can draw, I can click and drag and draw out the space that I want it to alarm. So right now, I'm saying I want it to alarm this section right here. And all this red on the sides, this will not trigger the alarm. Um, so if I did have a flag or something like that that was always blowing in the wind, I would leave that little red grid there because I don't want that flag constantly sending me alerts that there's motion detected and things like that. So that, the, and it's so easy to use. You can, you can click this full screen button and alert the whole thing, the clear all button and have I'm sorry, the full screen button and have no no alerts on any of the camera. The clear all, clear all have alerts on the entire camera. The sensitivity of the alerts can be adjusted here. You can set it on a schedule to where it's only alerting at certain times. And this is all just built into the menu right off the bat. And then you can see all your camera ports here. Once you have all eight of your cameras, we see that one has a blue check. That one's active. And uh, right click to take you out of the menu and just go straight into the camera viewing. So I'm really excited. I feel really good about this new system. Steph has been wanting our system to be upgraded for a long time. Um, just to make sure that we, our family is safe and secure and we can keep an eye on things. Um, so yeah, this, this is going to be great. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the description for the Onwote series that we're using. They do have larger versions if you want to try it, but I can't wait to get this thing, uh, get this thing installed. So thank you so much for joining me today on this episode of the Denman Homestead and um, <laughs> with my helper, Alora. And we will catch you on the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That's right. Bye, guys. Bye.